Hey guys, Ivan here with Shihab. Shihab, how was your weekend? Normal, as obvious. Uh, Not going on, right? Uh, where do we even start? For the, I think for the first time in like 50 wait, years. Wait, wait, wait. Before we start, like, the, uh, uh, like a disclaimer, like really, like I get thinking general like this is like, I, This is the third <laughs> podcast straight jekhane amra man united niye onek lomba discussion hobe amra this is not a man united podcast uh this is a football <laughs> podcast unfortunately the biggest topic right now is manchester united so yeah let's start there uh, manchester united 3 uh, man, well wish manchester united 3 manchester united nil tottenham hotspur 3 uh jose mourinho after the game Uh, what was the score? Three nil. That is three. How many Premier League titles have won? Three. That is more than the other 19 managers put together. Uh, then he said, "Respect, respect," and he walked out of the press conference. So let's start with that. Uh, yeah, thoughts. Uh, thoughts are just natural. I'm so devastated with the results. I really don't care what he says anymore. But if he's going to talk about the past, why couldn't he do that after the Sevilla game? Sevilla gets a higher power. United aren't the same anymore. It's in our heritage to lose. Sevilla are much better, blah, blah, blah. So often the boy never won three champions. So why is he talking about this now? Well, I think the difference here is like he's talking about like on Nietzsche quite a bit. So which is like the funny part was that uh, Oweda Bollock actually went back and like started counting. They actually back in Nietzsche manager. So he's right. Basically, Guardiola has won uh, Manuel Pellegrini. Um, at West Ham, he has won. Uh, by the Conte, Ranieri, recent winners, they're not here. So he, like, he's right, actually, but does it really matter right now what he's done with Chelsea in the past? Uh, what matters right now should be what he's doing with Manchester, Manchester United, right? He didn't win those titles with United. He won those with Chelsea. And we respect him for that. He's a very yeah, good player, manager. Well. He's done great things in his career. But we cannot man, uh, praise him based on what he's done with the another club we know he's achieved great things that is why he was appointed but you cannot say i won three titles so respect me when you just lose three nil at your home you just can't do that and uh, like do you think this was like like a ploy did uh, like to distract away from the game like he's doing this so that he doesn't have to face like the Like, like us, for example, like the first thing we did was started talking about his press conference and not what happened on the pitch. Uh, could be, but is it really helping? Because the way I see it, Sanchez is getting a lot of stick. Pogba is getting a lot of stick. Marcel is getting a lot of stick. Bailly got a lot of stick. So is it really helping? I don't know. People are talking about United all the time. They're always saying we're in a crisis, which we probably are. They're talking about different issues that are going wrong at United. So is this really helping him trying to divert the tension away from the match? I don't think so. But if he I mean, is trying to do that, I guess, kudos. You're almost at, at the point like, where you start thinking, like, Mourinho, like, some... Is it delusional? Like, uh, another comment he made was, I think this was to BBC, uh, uh, strategically and tactically, we didn't lose the game. I mean, really? <laughs> I know they played better than Brighton, yeah. but like Tottenham beat them like convincingly. I would refer to a tweet from uh, Brand McClare, a legend of United. He played around 350 matches for United, and then he was under Sir Alex's coaching staff for like a decade. So what he basically said is, at halftime, United obviously went there as a better team, but Pochettino's man. Wanted out the problems that United were having, especially in their backline, because it was far more stretched, and Herrera wasn't good. I know he made a really good tackle on Dele Alli. Jetta Jono people will love him because people love him in ways, but he wasn't good as a centre back. He was at fault for the second goal, by the way. And Spurs, Mane, focused on those weaknesses, got their players on those areas, especially Alli and Mora, and it worked. They scored. We can do that. We can figure out what weaknesses Spurs had. But Pochettino could figure out what weaknesses United had. And that paid off. So I won't say tactically we didn't have any flaws. We definitely did. But we played much, much better. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, well, it was obvious. Like, uh, man, it, 
it was a much better performance than Brighton, but then you were playing a much better team um, in Tottenham. So, uh, well, if you look at the stats, Manchester United had a 57% possession, 23 shots on goal, and, you know, five corners. I think Tottenham only had two. Uh, like, you see... You see this, and uh, it, it like statistically they have one hundred. You know they were the better side in some parts, but that's not the whole story. I mean, uh, is like is Jose Mourinho sort of losing it and thinking like you know he's he's judging it by a stats book and not uh, looking at the bigger picture where he's like his team was like completely be- uh, beaten convincingly. And Lucas Mora, at first half, he had a penalty shot, which, I, in my opinion, should have been a penalty. Uh, Dele Alli missed a, like, a golden opportunity in the second half. It could have been worse. Like, 3 0 sort of flattered them in the end. Uh, actually, the team basically looks demotivated. They don't have anything to play for. Like, and, let's and, talk about Lukaku. He's one of Jose's enforcers, he's one of his loyals, loyalists. And he was bad. Matic was bad. Herrera was bad. And like bad. the players looking demotivated. Like who is that yeah. on? Like is it on the manager to get these players motivated or like do the players on the like, deserve a lot of blame for this? I understand if Pogba is playing bad because he has this whole rival thing going on. Barca want him. He might want to leave. I understand that. I understand if Marcel is playing bad. He has attitude problems. Okay. I understand if Rashford is playing bad. Fine. He's a mature. I understand if Shaw is playing bad, he's unfit. But Kalke, almost everyone played bad. I think apart from Shaw. Everyone missed sitters. Everyone when missed easy passes. or they, Everyone was sloppy all over the place. And they basically yeah, we'll- looked like a team who wasn't willing to fight for it. First half, they were good. After the first goal, we entirely fell flat. We didn't have that motivation to fight for it, to equalize. And after the second goal, it was completely done. We never got back. So- yeah, that's the thing. Like, you know, um, like you could call me a neutral, but, you know, <laughs> everybody knows uh, my feelings on Manchester United. Uh, but, you know, it was 2-0. And I, I was like, this is done. They're losing. And I was like, they're, they're not coming back. And this is not, this is not something I'm used to. Like you used to, before, you may, you may would go one nil down, two nil down, and then it's like the 85, 85th minute, and you go like, yeah, they're, they're still gonna come back. But we fear factor Tanaya. Anybody like Brighton, Hope, Tottenham, you Newcastle last year, like Huddersfield, uh, you know, teams come to Manchester or play Man United at home. You know, there's no fear among them. Uh, whereas if you look at Newcastle uh, against Chelsea, uh, Benitez went like full, full on defensive. But and there's a fear factor there because if you go attacking, like you know, we'll get slaughtered at the back. But Man United, like teams are coming at them, and is that something that Mourinho needs to work on? Definitely does. First match of the Bogey against Leicester, we won two one, but Leicester had more possession. They were trying more, and they probably had more shots at and more attempts. We won by a, pen, a penalty goal and a very lucky Luke Shaw goal. That was a very lucky Luke Shaw goal. I'm pretty sure Mata did not mean that. But we won. Yeah, the performance wasn't really good at all. I mean, who be average for performance? Second match, Ashi. <laughs> by made errors, Lindelof made errors. But that first half, when I Brighton had us on the leash, we couldn't complete a single pass. They were pressing us. Brighton, when I they came into the Premier League, I guess, last season. They were pressing Man United, and we couldn't do anything at all. But, about but that. Uh, with Glenn Murray, who's, what, 35? Is he? Like, he, he was running after United defenders, which was crazy. And that first man is so hilarious. And then yesterday, we lost 3-0. Money, even the minimalist of errors are getting us punished with money, goals and defeats. It, this feels very wrong. At the moment, the ne- environment around United is so negative. There are so many confusions. There are so many questions. Questions about Mourinho's relationship with Ed Woodward because of the transfer thing. Mourinho's relationship with Pogba, with Marcel, with other players. And other questions over the dedication of other players. 
and who wants to stay, who wants to go. And there are so many questions, so many unanswered questions, so many negative vibes going around the United camp right now. It's difficult for a player to be entirely focused and give his best. And that's causing, causing us. It's when, when, when Moino was when, uh, being himself last season, let's put it like that, I was always against that because I'm never in support of being negative. Fine, you're going to take shots at the manager. And that's fine. Sometimes managers do that. But you cannot be moaning all the time. You cannot be blaming everyone all the time. It creates pressure on your own players. And I don't know, man. It worked with Drogba and Lampard and all those guys, but it's not working here now. So don't do that. But he kept doing, doing that. He kept pressing the players. He kept scapegoating them at times. And that cost us. The, all those criticisms have, have led to this position where everyone is under the microscope and every defeat is like a relegation battle. We're losing a relegation battle. And uh, this environment that we have, I don't think at any other club or under any other manager, it would be like this. He needs to also, sort it out. Second ta- like second time in two games, uh, do we need to do double case? And uh, like, yeah, it's almost baffling. Like, what's that down to? Like, is it like act a goal corporate players just lose concentration? Or is there's no directions? Like, is there no leader on the on the pitch, like, um, like telling people to get back together, get their head screwed back on, like after a goal. We lack quality. There's no doubt about that. We needed better defenders. We needed better uh, attackers. That's absolutely true. But the problem we're facing right now is, in my opinion, down to um, the players' confidence. Man, the mistakes they make are so immature. You feel like. Uh, you wouldn't do that in a regular match unless you're very confused and very, um, what can I say, Mane? very low on confidence. So for example, Bai, last match at Kharap Hills, and today he got dropped, uh, yesterday, he got dropped from the squad entirely. And Herrera, who's never in my life, I've never seen him play as a center back, but he was played as a center back. Moino had Bai, uh, Bai Lilo, was in the think, squad. Roho, Tilo, I'm not sure about Roho. Hey, Bai squad is going to we'll see. Moino had Lindelof, Bai, I think Rojo is fit, I'm not sure. Darmian, or Shobek in the defenders. Darmian, fullback, but he can't play as a center back. And he has played as a center back under Mourinho, but he opted to go with Herrera. So, what does this do to Bai's confidence? It definitely doesn't help it. Um, well, I, I have a theory on that. I think he's trying to make a statement to the board that. Uh, I'm Harry Maguire, Chai Silam, Chelsea, uh, Leicester, I'm uh, Toby Alderweireld, Alder- Chai Silam, uh, Tottenham, and Tomra Down. I, so, this is that's why I have to play a midfielder, and, or a good midfielder, and Herrera is a good player uh, as a center back. So, this is his, th- this is classic Mourinho. Uh, he did this in Chelsea um, as well. Like, this is, this is what happens when he, when he don't give me what I want, and that is what I'm going to do. And the if he goes, is, the board comes back to him and he's just going to say, like, yeah, he's the best player that... Uh, he was my best choice. He was my only choice. Uh, other than that, is, it's like, is his tactic really working? Is it making the team play better? No, it's not. Let's face it, Moreno Jotu is signing Hoist, and most of them have not been as good as we expected. Zlatan Ibrahimovic, very good signing, but Mkhitaryan, equally bad. I know Anika Bosu Mkhitaryan is like, I mean, he was really good in the Europa League and he was, but that's his level. Laka said to Europa League, but he's not doing that I mean, as good as expected in the Premier League because Europa League, you basically face the fifth and sixth team from the La Liga and Premier League sides and the weaker sides. It's much diff- difficult in the Premier League. And Mkhitaryan didn't do anything in the Premier League. That's why he got sold. He was frozen out of the squad and then he was sold. So Mkhitaryan wasn't good. Pogba, he has the talent, we know that, but Pogba, Jotuta expect Kursu. He has not been as good as that. When you I mean, he has been for million, France, just not for Man United. Chita, he's been good for France, he has the talent, but he's been very inconsistent about it. He was bought for 110 million, so you expect him to at least be one of the best midfielders in the league, if not the best um, player. But De Bruyne was better than him, Silva was better, Kante was better. 
I would say Eriksen was better. So he, he's not even man, in the top three midfielders ballpark, let alone being a top three player. But that's what you want him to do. Be one, of, be that talismanic figure, be that Cantona, be that Scholes, be that Ronaldo Rooney for United. He wasn't that. Sanchez, we're paying him 500k a week. And for players who's on that much money, I think he gets more than Ronaldo. He's basically done nothing. He has less goals than Lucas Mora. Uh, since then, and, and, well, he was on the bench as well. Like, yeah, he was and on the bench. Rams. Just the imagine how bad you have to play to be a five hundred thousand a week player and be on the bench. He was that bad. He was not even in the squad. I think he was injured, but he wasn't selected for the other game. So Sanchez isn't performing. Pogba isn't performing. Mkhitaryan's already gone. Lindelof doesn't get a game, and by his I would say Bai has been a good signing, even though last week. And we have to talk about Martial as well. Like uh, I was texting you before. <laughs> Martial cannot swat it too long. Martial I expected. And I, and I was like, maybe he was injured. And you're like, no, he wasn't injured. It's like, that doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't you even put him on the bench? It doesn't make sense. When we were trailing by 2-0, we needed to put on, put in someone with an attacking um, an attacking spark. When a rest- did we get in? Marvin Fellaini. Gashford Chilo, but we also got in Fellaini. And then we started crossing the ball, and Fellaini did what he could do. Basically nothing, and we didn't score. If Habe he's just trying too hard to make a point. We get the point. You don't like these players. We get the point that you're on favor of selling them the board and let you. We get that. It's a protect a match. But he's trying to do that. He's repeating the same mistakes, and he's basically digging his own grave. We've lost two in a row now. If we don't get a result against Burnley, that puts a lot of pressure on him. Um, we also have to talk about uh, Phil Jones and um, Chris Molling. Like, absolute disasters. Like, at, at, I'm at the point, Jay, and uh, I even question whether they would, they're good enough to be... Like, listen, you know, next week they could have a blinder and they could have a really good team, but uh, based on... Uh, that performance against Tottenham, like the question really, are they even good enough for the Premier League forget Manchester United? It's a great question because <laughs> I honestly don't think they are. Especially like, Smalling. Jones on his day. Trust me, like, and I, 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 would, I would much rather keep Lachelles or, um, you know, the, anybody else. Not, I wouldn't take Chris Smalling. Maybe Phil Jones, maybe not that bad. But Smalling, I wouldn't take. Jones is good on his day, but Smalling, Mane. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So, like, you see, he's basically the Fellaini of defenders. We'll just, we'll just leave it. But at least Fellaini gets goals. Uh, okay, so I don't know if you saw this. I, this wasn't reported. I, I don't think this was reported too many places. I think it is just in BBC, BBC Radio to Shum Pasilam. So, after the game, uh, um, Mourinho, like, usually on a game when you lose 3 0, Mourinho t- would tend to, like, go back straight into the. Uh, into the dugout, but this time he actually started going, he went onto the pitch and he started um, you know, talking to players. So he actually went towards Paul Pogba. I think he went for Shaw. That's what I read. I'm not sure. But yeah, he, what happened? He went towards Paul Pogba is... and um, Pogba was actually talking to Serge Aurier uh, of Tottenham. Like, I guess, you know, they were talking, like, who he knows pretty well, I guess, from uh, his fan states. And uh, and Pog and Moina tried to sort of interject, like other match, other the ball hurt this level, other match cannot just there. So. And apparently Pogba sort of gave him the cold shoulder. It's like Pogba wasn't bothered with Moina, and Pogba just kept talking to Serge Aurier. And as soon as that happened, Moina started walking away. Like he shook hands with them, and he walked away, and he walked towards the Stratford end, where you know. People don't know that's where the most loyal, like the longest season ticket holders at Old Trafford are. Um, and Stratford, and, and over there, he stood there for almost like three, I think two or three minutes, where around like a thousand or so, like Man United fans stayed back. And it might not have been a thousand, it might have been like seven, like six, seven hundred, and uh, like applauded him back. So, like, sort of giving him. Uh, a vote of confidence. Uh, like, thoughts on that? The first on Paul Pogba. First part, what's Pogba part? Pogba wants to leave, 
oh, মানে হি ইজ নট সিং আই ডু আই উইথ মোরিনো হিজ মেড ইট কোয়ার ফর দোজ ইন্টারভিউজ ওয়ার হি সেড হি কুড গেট ফাইন্ড ফর স্পিং হিজ মাইন্ড দোজ শর্টস মিনো রায়ল হ্যাজ বিন টেকিং হি ইজ ডুইং দ্যাট ইন্টেনশনলি তাই না ও তো মানে বুঝেই বলছে যা বলছে এন্ড হি ইজ মেকিং ইট ক্লিয়ার যে হি ইজ নট ভেরি হ্যাপি উইথ দ্য ওয়ে ইট ইজ অ্যাট ইউনাইটেড এন্ড রায়ল ইজ হেল্পিং এন্ড হি স্পোক and Raga isn't help let's face it if barcelona wants you you're going to want to leave and united aren't in a great place right now so if barca comes for you you're going to want to leave i don't think any team in the premier league can resist an offer risk a player from going to real madrid or barcelona for instance carter left this season last uh, january the putinho left this will happen because they're a much better team squad than I, we are and they're more likely to win something and pogba would probably want to win the champions league at this point of his career which is more likely to happen with when you're playing with messi than well at united so i can understand him why he wants to leave i can understand why he wants man he's showing all those tantrums kalke ojeta course there is this moment in the uh, match where he collects the ball from the hair and then he stands there for a minute and allows the spurs player to come to him presses him and then he's like just holding the ball against the uh, with the, his back facing them and then he just passes the ball to the sidelines i mean what the hell was that there's no player there so who are you passing to no one he's just basically just the second time he's done it he did it against brighton as well yeah he was horrible against brighton he's basically doing it to just man, prove a point che yeah, i don't want to give him very unhappy my performance is going to be like this if you keep me so just let me go already here's this the thing this is a season this is my my opinion and men are did like are not selling ball ball because i think uh he's there like sort of like the glaziers uh He's to the Glazers what uh, Neymar is to I forgot that like whatever the PSG owner. I like is it? So uh, like he brings in a lot of money. Paul Pogba, his shirt sales are still number one um, at Man United, and it has been for like two or three years. And he brings in so much money commercially, merchandise wise, and everything else. That like if there was. a uh, choice between Mourinho and Paul Pogba you just feel like Mourinho is going to go they're not going to get rid of Paul Pogba get Mourinho and Pogba united board didn't even back Mourinho when he was against Marseille and Marseille wasn't man, doing anything at all last season he had a very good man, he, he was good in the first half in the second six months he was very bad and united board <laughs> didn't back him uh, didn't back Mourinho against him because they've got faith on him are it a reason i'm not sure why but there's a story on rmc who are usually very um reliable they said moino tried to broker a deal with chelsea a swap deal between willian and marcel against edward versus vicious and you can't do that man woodward's the guy who pays your bills he pays your salary you can't just man undermine his authority you can't do that if he's wanting you to play marcel do it if the results are bad that's on woodward then say na Well, I don't but agree with Edward. He wanted to broker team, a deal, but, you know, and that I guess pissed Woodward off, and that resulted in us not having a centre back at all. Yeah, well, these the things team, can't uh, happen at a club. I don't know. Right? At a club like Man United, problem there. Because basically, Mourinho knows he's not getting backed by the board. He's and the players. If we know this, the players obviously do know this, and there are obviously certain players who don't want Mourinho to be there. I'm guessing Pogba and Marcel are at the top of that list, and they're throwing those tantrums, they're leaking news, and all those Zidane news is coming out. I guess Zidane is doing it intentionally, I guess, as well, because I think Zidane would want this job. Yeah, I mean, this anyone is, would. Anyone is, would. Like after Real Madrid, if there's one one other club in the world that you want, like you. You can't, and he stays a level playing for the United United, because uh, you know, uh, still commercially, like this is the number one sports franchise in the world. I think they're they're valued more than the New York Yankees and the, and the Dallas Cowboys recently, something like that. And uh, like you know, Ed Woodward recently, like this is in a general meeting. He uh, this was earlier this year in 2018. Uh, he said that it doesn't matter what happens on the pitch. uh because the money they're bringing in like commercially and uh man united share prices i think this was last week i think last week a, a share price or something happened and the share prices are through the roof like 
the the board members are happy, the shareholders are happy. Uh, you know, obviously the Glazers are super happy. Uh, everyone's making money uh, associated with Manchester United. It's almost becoming like Arsenal, um, like 2.0, isn't it? It is, but there's a difference. Arsenal are problem too. Their board did not want to spend much, but at United, it's the other way around. I know a season we didn't spend, but we already gave Mourinho like 350 to 400 million, I guess. I'm yeah, not sure yeah, about the figure. Million, that's how much he spent uh, since he, um, you know. So uh, that's he, like 120 million a year. That's not, an, uh, that's a lot of money for any club anywhere in the world. If you look at, say, Spurs, since we spoke, it's Spurs, I don't think they put money, uh, they spent 300 million in the last 10 years. I'm honestly yeah. betting. Uh, Chelsea don't spend that much, as much as we do. Conte in his first season didn't spend like 60, 70 million, I guess. Some are more than 80, maybe 100. Uh, and this season, they didn't spend all that much. Liverpool recently man, started spending, but before this season, they had a very balanced scale. Yeah, but Liverpool um, also- a lot of this spending uh, came from the Coutinho sale. I guess the yeah, Van Dyke transfer was entirely funded, funded by Coutinho. And the Oxley Chamberlain one as well. But- you know, 150 million, they spent it however they felt fit. But we're spending, regardless of how much we sell. So you can't say yeah, the board didn't back the manager at all. Does that mean... Yeah, he spent you know, have a perfect players and 65 million on uh, center backs. And uh, he's still playing Ender Herrera at the back, which, you know, completely does not make sense. Um, this is on individuals, and I agree that there are a lot of individual errors there. Yeah, I do players let Mourinho down. But if you're playing here as a center back, you have to take that responsibility. Pius fit, Rulino Love's fit, Rose fit, Darman's fit, and you're going with there with her as a center back. You have to take that responsibility. Jokon line up out his everyone is panicking about it. Because well, here as a center back. First, you saw Matic would play as a center back. Later, we saw Herrera as a center back. Regardless, this is just weird. It's they're not like Carrick. Michael Carrick he used to be a defensive midfielder, but he could also play as a center back. That was okay. Ami Amal life a Herrera go on a center back. He should be killed. They so, and he made money. His positioning was so bad. Also, I, I put like really quick. I was spending way too time, way too much time on Bennett. Uh, well, what about Fred, the new signing? I think it's just, man, too early to say anything about him. Like, for instance, Fabinho at Liverpool, he's not playing. He wasn't good, that good. But then again, Fabinho at Liverpool, he's playing, man, he's not playing much. So I would give him time before making comment. Uh, um, you know, Lukaku missed an open goal. Like, you know, again, that stuff. Listen, my thing is like stuff like that happens. It's like that happens to everything. And uh, like just because that happens, and you just can. You can and Mourinho isn't new. It's not like he's. This is his first season, and he was just he just inherited the squad. Like you know, he's been there for uh, over two years now. He's had what five transfer windows, and uh, he spent a lot of money. So it probably to be, you know, if you if you have to go like you know, we lost three nil, and it's only because of the players. Like no, it's not. Um, the manager has to take a lot of that responsibility. Um, and uh, anyways, uh, just m- one more question on, on uh, Mourinho. Is, uh, has his man management skills gone? Like, is he able to inspire players anymore? Like, it's highly questionable. I think it's, uh, this is a different generation of players. Agents are a lot more powerful than they used to be, and the money is there for clubs to spend. So transfers are pretty regular now. Any At any point of time, and any big club might cash in on a player and get an, uh, two more, three more, another big name player. This is a pretty regular scenario in clubs now. Jetta Doshwoshar, for example, you wouldn't ever think that Chelsea would cash in on Lampard to go for Gerard or cash in on Lampard to go for, say, Kaka. But now, this is a very possible scenario, Jay. say, you can cash in on Osman Dembele and get Mbappe. That is a very possible scenario. For but if Barcelona do it, I don't think any fans will be upset. But Eta Dosbosrage, you wouldn't expect that to happen. So you could man, treat players the way you want and still get away with it. But Akon, there it's man, managers have to be a lot more delicate about it. Which is why man, I would refer to a quote by Pochettino. He said 
I think at the start of the season, Jay, he's basically a coach. He improves the players. He does nothing more. That's his task. The transfers and everything that's up to the management. Orkas to improve the players and set out the tactics, and that's what he does. Uh, and Moino case so many managers are managers and more. Moino, I think, said it about two weeks ago. The managers are managers and what they're basically head coaches. They set out the tactics, they name the lineups, and that's about it. They don't have any says on how players should live their life or etc. But if you can remember 20 years ago, when Wenger first came in, Wenger was funny. He had an eye for details. He would even force Arsenal players to um, use spoons in a certain way so that they wouldn't have to take too much sugar in their tea. He was very strict about their diet, wanted to vegetarian diet start for sugar. And he had this aura about him. Everything he did was in a different way. That Premier League had never seen. Fergie was very strict about his players, especially off the pitch. And that is one of the reasons why Beckham was sold. But a generation of players, can Ferguson, even Fergie's anarchy, he can just go to Pogba and say, you know what, Instagram will be uploaded. You know, because everyone's doing it. And if you're going to do that, there will be criticisms, there will be comments. It, well, if you just say that I'm all, like, you know, if you go, like, I'm old school and, and I'm old school as well. Like football, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of like a traditionalist. And I'm I'm totally anti-VAR. I hate the uh, hate. I just hate it, honestly. Um, and I'm like I'm very traditional. It's like I want football uh, to be a grassroots game. Like you know why? Which is the reason why I love football, and a lot of people do the same. Um, but I have to admit, like you know, like times have changed. Like it's not just football. Like everywhere in the world, like. Uh, People mentality has changed. Like we don't live in 2006 anymore. Uh, and just if you, even if you just look at football in terms, like 2006, like Mo- like not 2000, 2005, 2004, when um, Mourinho first Chelsea touched like it was, it, like he had a lot of money. He spent a lot of money. And it was at that time like he bought like he they had he had players like Adrian Mutu, uh, for whom Chelsea paid like you know 17, 18 million or something. Which was a lot of money at that time, and uh, it was sort of the, the the scenario was something like if he doesn't play well, okay, I'm just gonna leave him on the bench and I'll buy somebody else. Whereas you know those same players nowadays are worth like 70, 80 million, like, and now if you buy a player for even sixty million and you leave him on the bench, like the owner is gonna come knocking on your door is like, hey, well, hang on a second, you just spent sixty million on a player. Why aren't you playing him? And it's not, we don't live in 2006 where you could go like, yeah, you don't, you don't want to play for me? All right, fine, I'll leave you on the bench. You're like, you can rot in there and you can ruin your, um, I can ruin your career. Nowadays, like, players are going to go like, yeah, you don't want to play me? All right, fine, I'll just sit on the bench. And uh, the agent's going to come knocking at other clubs' doors and then the clubs are going to start uh, you know, another club is going to come and place a bid and the owner is going to go like, oh, you're not playing him anyway, so I might as well sell him and get some money out of it. So, like, that old school mentality of managers, you know, they have to change. And it's not just Marina, I, I believe, like, a lot of managers. Um, yeah, especially the English ones, I feel that. And this new breed of managers, whereas you look at like, you know, the, the Pochettinos, uh, Guardiola. Well, Guardiola has adapted, sort of. But, uh, you know, Klopp and whoever else, like, you know, they have come in. And they, like, nowadays you have to put your arm on the shoulder of a player. You go like, hey, pat him on the back. It's like, hey, you had a bad game. I understand. You know, you got to come back. We're going to work on it. We're going to come back together next week and we're going to have a better game. And if you're just going to go, like, what he did with Luke Shaw, like, a lot of people are going to give him credit. It's like, oh, maybe I've worked with Luke Shaw, and why is I going to work with uh, Pogba or Martial? But shouldn't he be, like, sort of blamed for not playing Luke Shaw last year? Like, if Luke, we know Luke Shaw is a brilliant player. Uh, Man, Man United paid, what, 30-something million four years ago for him. Again, a lot of money at that time for a left back. And, uh, and he, he had a really bad injury, I understand. He was out for a year. 
But he was fit from last season. He should have been playing. If he's as good as he's playing right now, he should have been playing a lot more. And he could have gone to the World Cup. You know, he could have been playing in the semifinals of a World Cup. And you just feel like, you know, he, he, like what he has done with Luke Shaw right now, he should have done it a long time ago. And whatever he's done to repair that relationship, he's got to be doing it right now with, with Pogba, Martial, and whoever else. Uh, yeah, I follow a lot of old United fans on Twitter. And there was this one guy who was talking about this. And he said that in the 80s, Brian Robson would just come into a local bar and share pint with the fans, the local fans in pubs on a bar. And in the 90s, Beckhams and Giggs didn't used to do that. Akunva appears oral corbana. So you can't expect Pogba to be like Robson because times have changed. They are a lot more richer. They have this profile to maintain. Akun, for instance, Daily Mail makes story out of anything. If you wear a watch, is it a Rolex or is it a Titan or is it this or that? It's, I mean, everything has a story, especially this uh, with Memphis Depay. This was very serious. Every time Deepai would drive a car, and he was a car enthusiast, it a key model, how much did it cost, and is it one of the reasons why he's not playing well? I mean, it's fine to criticize a player, but stop nitpicking. This is one of the reasons why players can't open up as well, because of the paparazzis. Coming back to the point of psychology, Mourinho's always been about the psychology. He's always had this, and he has a degree on psychology, by the way. So he's always had this thing about himself that you need he to buy some new books if, if you're asking me. Uh, and anyways, coach comes in here, Mourinho. He had this thing about he could read the players' mind and he could motivate them. He could play with their minds. And Jaranagi, people whom, whom he saw fit for his plan, he would get the best out of in most of the cases. But because of the agents thing and because of the, because of the fact that there is so much money, basically even Stoke and Fulham are signing, Fulham are signing man, a World Cup winner in Sharla. Man, That's how crazy it is these days. So if a player is not responding the way Mourinho wants to, he'll leave. There's no second chance. There's no love and hate relationship. He'll basically just leave. He'll whine about it. He'll moan about it. He'll throw a few tantrums, have a few bad games, and force the manager to sell him. So Mourinho can be himself entirely right now. And that's one of the reasons why he's not getting results the way he wanted to. He won the Premier League with Chelsea. And then I guess the Chelsea fans realize, Acha, if I was scoring 20 to 25 goals, I would be in the big on your top three list or I would be in this list. Costa was not the top scorer. Harry Kane was. Hazard. One of the biggest flaws in Hazard, people say, Erky, yeah, he's not a goal scorer. Could it be down to Mourinho's system? A bit, yes. He could, I, in a different system, he would get five to six goals more in a league season. I would say Costa would do. So they revolted and Moino was out. At United, we, I'm guessing the same thing happened. If you look at Lukaku, he had 25 goals at Everton. At United, he had 16 goals. Sanchez, goal number decreased. Marcel, numbers decreased. Pogba, numbers decreased. We had created the least amount of chances from the top six in last season in the Premier League and didn't score many goals either. I think it was third or fourth we were. So players are seeing that Moino's not helping them being how they want to be. Moino's not getting them the money or respect they thought they would achieve at here at United. Especially Pogba, I would say, because when Pogba was making this jump, he said he wanted to win the big on the Euro. It might be funny, but... It's good to have ambitions. Right now, Pogba is in a limbo. Mar- Most of the players are in a limbo. Sanchez, Marcel, ex- except for Lukaku, he's been good. So it's understandable why they don't want to be playing for Mourinho. And how do you do that? Players have more powers these days. So can, if every agent comes knocking on Edward Wood's door and says, yeah, our player is not satisfied, he wants to leave, Woodward will only have one option. And that's Sack Mourinho. And that's what they're basically doing. That, this is what I feel. Players are giving up on him. They want a different manager. They want a different system. They want to play where they are more complimented. They feel better about themselves, which they currently don't. Everyone's under the microscope, as I said earlier, because of the pressure we've created on them. And that is why they're probably giving up on them. That's why they're missing the simple passes. They're basically giving the ball away. They're missing one-on-ones. They're missing 
man, free posts. I'm not saying Lukaku is so rat or anything, but I think the environment is like that. And because of the negativity and the pressure and the scares that revert to the other players would know. And because of this, it's affecting the performance of the entire team, even the players who are on his side. And which, and I only see this ending one way. My question is, is it November, December, or at the end of the season when Mourinho goes out? Because he's not staying here next season, I can assure you. Um, would uh, Pochettino do better with this same squad? I believe so. I, I know, I, I, I've already stated that Guardiola would do better, but what about Pochettino? Guardiola would. Obviously, I think one of the best things about Pochettino, I won't say, that he, oh, actually, every issues will be resolved, but he's one of those guys who's more, I mean, he's not a, I mean, Mourinho's not a yes man like the old managers, but I think we need a yes man, a guy who would work within the budget, a guy who, who would accept his average squares and work, I mean, climb his way up to the top instead of, Money, just demanding top players. You can't come here and say, it's a fine, I want a Pogba instead of a Bastion Schweinsteiger, a Luka Modric instead of Morgan Schneiderlin, and some other famous dude, like Bushkets instead of Michael Carrick, let's say, because he was old. You can't do that. And when you don't get them, you, can't, you don't get to be sad and moopy and whiny. I think one of the best things about Pochettino is he knows how to deal with money, players with let's say, limited capabilities. He's worked at Southampton, he's worked at Tottenham, and when he first took over the Tottenham team, no one expected them to finish within the top four, but not only has he done that, he's made them a consistent top four side, which United or even Chelsea weren't in the past few seasons, and he's actually taken them to second position, which is probably their best finish since, I don't know since when, probably 56 years. I mean, I'm a life here, I go on and Spurs being second. But he's done that. And he's done that with players who cost like 5 to 10 million mostly. Free Pierre was an expensive signing. Order Valero, there's a man, uh, Pochettino signing. He had him at Southern and he bought him at Spurs and he cost like 8 million. Very good signing. Sun, I think, was a bit expensive one, but again, a very good signing. Ali was like 5 million. Fantastic signing. So these players, younger players, lesser known players or hidden talents, as you say. Pochettino has a good eye for them, and he has this, and uh, he's just okay with working with these type of players who are stars, and that's what we need right now. Someone who would take over this team and understands that hey, there are these issues, there are these players who aren't really that great, but you can't exactly have everyone you want. So let's work with them. Let's try to improve them. Let's try to take them as far as they can, and. As along the process, you will replace some, you will get some better players, you will sell some players, and money. within three or four years of time, you will get a better squad. You will have to be patient about it. I'm not, I don't think we will win any big trophies in the next few seasons, no matter who comes, Zidane or even Pep Guardiola. Because Guardiola to the Ashe, money. If he sees small and passing the ball, he's probably going to get a stroke. <laughs> I think a lot of managers. Man, it's small thing. Imagine <laughs> Sam Allardyce seeing his defenders like doing something like that. Allardyce would love it because United have man, United are the best long ball side in the world. <laughs> we have so many six feet players. It's basically our average height is probably big, man, taller it's than Lakers. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's almost like if this form carries on, like uh, Sam Allardyce is still available. Like November, he can come in. We have yeah. Lukaku, Pogba, Filani, so many giants in this team. Matic, hope six feet. Yeah, okay. Anyways, like, there was one other team that played that game. <laughs> Almost forgotten. Um, uh, really good performance from Tottenham, especially, especially uh, one Lucas Mora. And, uh, you know, this is a guy, uh, Fergie really wanted to buy him, didn't he? Like, uh, until like, PSG came back and just snatched him up. Uh, he, he seems like a gem, like, you know, I, I know Son is out for three weeks or something. Uh, so this guy seems like perfect li- replacement. And you, you start wondering, like, if, if when Son comes back, is he getting back into the team? I think he is, but Lucas more topic. He knows how to work with these players with limited skills. Uh, Mora was a very promising talent, but he seemed to have lost his way at PSG. He was there for choice. Uh, winger or fifth choice winger at times when Faxler was there, Neymar was there, Mbappe was there. There was no way he was getting a game. And no one really thought of him as a good player, but Pochettino well, did. did. Right. So, Fergie did, uh, but that was, was a long time ago. 
when yeah. he after he had moved to PSG, he wasn't really doing that well. Yep. When Spurs signed him, basically no one else was in for him. I guess it was Spurs or Shakhtar or Gagatas or someone like that okay, around that part of the Europe. Spurs got him and now he's being very good. And this and is what United need to do. He, he was born in January. Um, no, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry for cutting you off. Uh, he was born in January, but he's basically Spurs' is only signing this window, isn't it? Because they didn't <laughs> Players. Spurs did not sign a single player in the entire summer window, which is a record for the first time in the Premier League. His team has gone without signing a player. And that happened at a time when their captain, Oliver Verrod, has rejected a contract and said he wants to leave. Musa Dembele rejected a contract, his contract ends next year, and he's still not signed one. Uh, they don't have a replacement for Sun, who's out with a yeah, North Korean thing, Asia Cup, I guess. They also oh. don't have a decent enough backup striker. They don't have a player. Money. They don't. They haven't replaced Eric Dyer, who needs to be replaced. He's not fit for the top, top, top Dyer. So there are a lot of issues in that team. And Pochettino is still okay with it, and he's still yeah, continuing. He, he never complained, and that's what you need. You have to understand that in life, you don't always get what you want. We want good football. Moira won't give us that, but fine, give us results. We are going to complain, just like Moira is complaining right now. So, Pochettino knows how to... It's not just Pochettino. There are other managers, by the way. Tucker was my personal favorite choice, but he's now at um, PSG. So, by the way, that header yeah. from uh, Harry Kane, like, uh, that, that was a beauty, right? That was a really good header, but you can't allow Harry Kane to get a clean contact like that in a box. I think that's what was Jones even corners, doing. Like, nah, I disagree. I think that's one of those corners. I didn't. I wouldn't blame uh, the Man United defenders. I think it was just a really good corner, and then Harry Kane did really, really well. Like he was uh, on his back foot, uh, leaning back, and then he still got so much power on that header, and they had no chance. That was a fantastic header, but the least you should do is at least put some pressure on Kane so that he doesn't get a clean contact. Because, you know, it's Harry Kane, the best striker probably in the world. You can't allow him to have a free header or get away from you. And he, Jones said that Harry Kane got away from Jones and then got the header. He didn't beat him to it. He left him for a, for a hot dog and then so header. So, uh, it was, that's the thing about I, United. They're yeah. a mess. Eh? Yeah, there's... there's... Like complete disaster at the back. Uh, like yeah, I think it's it's already a contender for uh, one of the best headed goals for uh, the season. Um, uh, one more thing about like yeah, we, I know we touched on this a little bit. Like, he, like Daniel Le- Daniel Levy, he's not a very easy person to work with, um, and you know he has his ways and. He sticks by them, sort of. Like I think it was uh, Harry Redknapp who said something. It was a long time ago, like eight, nine years ago, that he's one of the most difficult um, people to work with, but you still love him because you know he has a great personality. Uh, so if someone like like Marino, he thinks he's, I, he has a bad with Woodward, like Levy is a whole different ball game, and ha, like Wood. How does that relationship work with Pochettino? I think when Mane, you're working for Levy, you have to accept the fact that you know how he is and you have to accept him the way he is. That's the first thing about working for Spurs. If you can't, then you're gone. And then yeah, why totally Redknapp worked, because Redknapp. he was hard to work with, but Redknapp admired the person Levy is. I guess Pochettino does as well. But Vias Boas and others, they didn't. They had problems with him. Yep. And that is why they didn't last long. Yep. Mourinho, um, I think... Uh, can, uh, you want to move on or you got anything else to add? Yeah, we can move on. And I can rant okay. all day, but... Really? Start <laughs> really quickly. Uh, um, Wolves won, Manchester City won, crisis at Manchester City, Guardiola's third <laughs> season syndrome. <laughs> what is it? I by chance Prince Pegg no, 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 that's me. I'm asking you. <laughs> Christ, that city. The city is going to win with 100 points anyway. I think last season, eight time, they drew against Everton. Everton, yeah. It was the second game. Yeah, this time, it was the third game. So, yeah. so, 
আমি আর কি সিটির রেজাল্ট নিয়ে বদল করেছি আই ওন্ট ইভেন ওয়াচ দেম প্লে দিস সিজন বিকজ ইটস টু ফ্রাস্ট্রেটিং টু বি অনেস্ট মানে দে বিট হারস বাই 6 গোলস ওকে সো জাস্ট জাস্ট টক अबाउट দ্য গেম ডিড ইউ ওয়ার ইউ এবল টু সি দ্য বোলস গোল আই ফরগট আই ওন্ট আই মেড এ ভাউ যে আই এম গোয়িং টু সিটি লুজ দ্য গেম আই এম নট গোয়িং টু ওয়াচ দ্যাট ওয়ান ওকে সো ইয়া ফার্স্ট অফ অল ইট ওয়াজ আ ইট ওয়াজ হ্যান্ড বল লাইক দেয়ার ইজ নো টু ওয়েজ अबाउट ইট আমি <laughs> If, even if it wasn't handball he was at least like half a year offside so the goal like it was handball and it was offside so it was a double whammy for man city uh, the goal should never have uh, never have stood and uh, i think aguero hit the post twice maybe three i can't remember he hit the post in the 94th minute 95th minute something like that as well from a free kick um I don't think Manchester City has too much to worry about. I think this uh, we got to give credit to Wolves. They 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 seem to be uh, a really decent side and I don't think they'll have too many problems with um, avoiding relegation. I guess not. They spend a lot of money and they got some really good players in there. Some really high profile players like Moutinho, very big name. I think their keeper uh, Kieran Ambuke is but he was the starter for Portugal. They have Ruben Neves obviously, so they're going to avoid relegation now i think they're going to finish within the top 10 the way things are going yeah there. um it's going to be like uh top 10 might be a stretch and I, i know newcastle did it last year but yeah top 10 might be a stretch but i don't i don't think they are um and they they have a good manager as well um uh, and, and they're going to buy players in january um which a lot of other teams might not be able to uh So moving on, um Newcastle won Chelsea 2 another win for Chelsea 9 out of 9 they're looking good I mean and hang on a second I said first podcast I said that will this be another season where nobody gives Chelsea any chance and they somehow come out winning the Premier League as it happened with Conte and I, I Listen, I have a crazy feeling. I still think Man City is going to win, but Chelsea will be will be uh and is not and easy not to crack. This is the thing. If you're going to overtake Man City, you need goals. Chelsea right now don't have many players who would get them a lot of goals. Morata let's talk about Newcastle. Morata man he missed like three or four easy setters. He there was this one shot he just had to just get his leg on the ball that's all he had to do just make a contact and he basically took a first set that was so heavy that the ball um newcastle defender piper so i don't remember the name there was this yeah, other was chance the <laughs> there was this was other chance where yeah. man it was a very good easy chance inside the box he fluffed it and there was this other chance scuff shot man morata does things you wouldn't even expect danny welbeck to do I know he's a good player technically but his finishing is just average man just average there was this good header chance as well i think he lost it so chelsea played well hazard was insane marcos alonso was good and i'm guessing they will do very good this season but winning the league with morata i just don't see this happening but i i have to address the situation with uh with uh, with rafa so I don't know if you noticed or if anybody else did like after the game like Paul Lambert or English comment. media uh, which one Paul Lambert like after the game the English media really went after uh, Rafa um and for his Paul tech. Lambert said that Rafa Benitez should step down because of being this defensive and he, if he were in his place he'd never have played that defensive Lambert okay, is the same guy who uh, lost 8-0 uh, but I'm just saying managing at some uh, villa 8-0 and it this that's the thing like what do what do what do people expect us to do like it's not us only and i i don't speak just for newcastle and, I, and i'll speak for other teams like look at huddersfield like you know they got spanked 6-1 last week right 
you had other teams like I think um, you know Sunderland uh, a couple of seasons ago. They got spanked in so many games. Um, I don't. I think last year we didn't have too many big scoring games, but. At the end of the day, last year, Newcastle's goal difference was better than everybody else in the bottom half. Uh, and it was actually better than might have maybe some of the teams in the top half as well. The big reason for that was that we, didn't, we lost against the big teams. Yeah, we lost against the top six. We beat some of the top six as well, but we lost those games. But we, none of those games we lost by a big margin. I think the only game was, uh, I think it was Man United. I think we lost 4-1. Uh, at Old Trafford, but that was the only game. Right? There was a three goal difference. Every every other game, I think it was three one, two one. We lost one nil to Man City, and we even had a chance in the last minute where we could have scored. Um, so, like, a goal difference matters. At the end of the day, and not only does goal difference matters, um, like not losing five six nil also matters because. You could go and attack Chelsea, you could go and attack Man City, you can go and attack Liverpool, and you can get spanked 5 0. And that's going to play psychologically, that's really bad for the players. Uh, it's not just, and not the players, it's also bad for the, the moral of the team, the, the fans, you know, the next home game, like the fans are going to be quiet. So, like, Benitez, a tactics, Chilo Jerukum, Je. Um, we're gonna like we're gonna make the game shorter. So the uh, a game of football is what ninety minutes. So if we can make that game instead of ninety minutes, make it say twenty minutes or thirty minutes, we have a better chance of winning. Which is obvious because Chelsea have better players. Chelsea have bought um, Jorginho or Jorginho, uh, however you, way you pronounce it, um, for more money than maybe the entire Newcastle starting eleven. So Chelsea are better players. So if I can make that game 20 minutes, if I defend for 70 minutes and it's nil-nil after 70 and then I attack, I have a better chance of winning or better chance of drawing and blah, 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 blah. So that is, and again, I understand this is Newcastle United. You know, we had Kevin Keegan, we had Sir Bobby Robson, we had some really good, even, even under Purdue, um, we were good attacking sides. Like, you know, we were the entertain- entertainers in the 1990s. So I get all that, but you know, we don't live in 1996 anymore. We don't have Alan Chia. We don't have Les Ferdinand. We don't have David Ginola anymore. We have, we have what we have, and they're not very good. So what, when we play the cities, Chelsea's, Liverpool's, uh, even Spurs, you know, we have to do what we have to do. We have to do what Benitez did. And we almost did it right. We were five minutes away from getting a point against Chelsea, which is a good result, even if it is at home. And we could have attacked from the first minute, and then we could have been thrashed four or five nil. So which is better? And obviously, I'm, then my answer is I'd rather lose 2-1 than lose, like, 5-1. So I would defend Benitez... Um, to the end on this uh, one issue. And, you know, I have other problems with uh, Benitez. I don't think we should have sold Mitrovic. Um, but that's the, only, that's the only thing. Other than that, like, I can't have any complaints of uh, what we did. This game or the previous game, you know, we have a really tough run of games and then we play Man City next and, you know, it's going to be the same. So if if Paul Lambert has a problem with us defending against Chelsea, he better be, uh, you know, he, he better not watch that Man City game because we're going to be doing the same thing again and try to, like, try to hold Man City to, um, for maybe like 80 minutes and then have a go in the last 10. Um, any thoughts on that? Let me, let me say something. If Benitez and Newcastle managed to get a point away from City, would anyone criticize them or would they praise them for getting a point from City? You'd praise them because basically no one can win against City right now. They went like 27 games unbeaten last season. So if you're planning to go to Man City and attack them or even at home if you're planning to attack them or Chelsea or even Liverpool right now, 
there's a good chance you're going to end up losing the match because they're too strong and their attack is too good. You can't allow players like Eden Hazard or Salah or Kevin De Bruyne to be on mark at any point in the game. There's always You always need to have two or three men around them because they're that good. They're in form. So for the pundits to criticize Newcastle for defending against Chelsea when they were this close to getting a point away, I think it's really harsh. If that last goal doesn't happen, and that's a very unfortunate yeah, point, and, by the and way. And the first goal to was it, never a penalty, by the way. Yeah, but it got neutralized because the other goal by on yeah, there was, was a foul on Giroud. <laughs> but the last goal, that was a very unfortunate one. It was an own goal. A deflected shot, I like guess. So, yeah. If that doesn't happen, would anyone criticize Newcastle? I don't think so. And I don't think there's any reason to. They were this close to getting a point in that game, and they didn't, unfortunately. So, I don't criticize Coromonte Kitchener. It's not like you're doing this against Stoke City or Huddersfield or anyone else. Newcastle last season played pretty good football. They, I think they defeated Liverpool last season at home. Could you no, score no, no. We drew Liverpool 1-1, okay, okay. we beat Man United, we beat Arsenal, we beat Chelsea. So, you drew against Liverpool. So 1-1, one, one, yeah. Jose Lu scored one, a deflect. One, one. Was a so goal, would you right? take 1-1 one, one in the I mean, defending like this, or would you take, let's say, 3-0 spanking, attacking? Because no, you're attacking against Liverpool, your defense is zone so they can't. There's no choice that's like, no... You, no, even men like okay, even Barcelona, and you know Barcelona has a certain way of the like the Cruyff way, the Guardiola way. Even Barcelona fans, like you tell them like, would you take a, would you take a boring one one over you going out crazy attacking and losing four nil? Like they're gonna take the one one. Like there's nobody wants to lose uh, a football game, whether it's one nil, two nil, five nil, nobody. I think the criticisms have been way too harsh and way too pretty much uncalled for Arki. I don't see any reason for criticizing Benitez. I think he's done a fantastic job with Newcastle. They man, he brought them up from the relegation zone. He finished with top ten, and he improved some some of the players in that squad, especially Gasolas. So I don't get it. I don't get the criticism. Benitez is a very good manager, has a very high profile. He's won the La Liga, he's won the Europa League, he's won the Champions League. He's basically done it all in the club football. So for Newcastle to have a manager like him, even at this point, a lot of people think he's not as good as he used to be after the Real Madrid and Napoli thing, but he's still a very, very good manager. He's won big games. You know, he actually won the Italian Cup with Napoli. And for all his plaudits, uh, Sari didn't win anything. So <laughs> Benitez is one year which he actually gets crit- criticized for. And Napoli, he actually won a trophy there. There's, that, there's a huge difference there. And, you know, it is a big factor. And listen, I love Sari. Like, listen, I have no problems with the guy. But, you know, again, you know, I get it. Like, we haven't won a trophy for 49 years. I know how much a trophy would mean to one of us. Whether if it's the League Cup or, you know, any, any stupid trophy, I will take anything. And I would think the same would go for a lot of those Napoli fans right now. And yeah, we played great football for three years, but what do we have to show for it? And it's almost nothing. Hey, at United, we won three trophies in Joseph's first season, and everyone was happy, even though we didn't play the best football. I mean, so, we were really bad. Doesn't count, right? Let's put it. Let's put the record straight. It doesn't, but I'm trying to be fair, even though I'm not. I'm biased. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Listen, really quick, I know we have a lot of Chelsea fans, so um, thoughts on them, again, like we, you know, nine points out of nine top, I think they're second in the table after Liverpool, um, doing really well, at, I think, they're, they're only also, also, they're only going to get better with this team, I think. Well, uh, I think they'll easily finish within the top three, sorry for cutting you out, but georgina has been really good, Kovacic, yep. I like what I saw. Yeah. Hazard to hazard, there's a yeah. you're having a lot of superlatives for him, so yeah, I think getting, they're gonna have a really good season. Yeah, Freeze. yeah, even even Ross Barkley, uh, you know, he's he's looking good, and this I is a player Barkley I Barkley had a good game. Barkley had a poor game, it's a good game. I think he was really good in the first half, especially. Yeah, um, but you know, he's he's got the talent, that's the thing, and they also have like you know, players they have a they have a decent 
like especially in midfield, they have a lot of midfielders. Like they have, uh, you know, Fabregas there. They have Danny Drinkwater Premier still League, there. Um, and I miss Fabregas and Kante. They have those two as well. Yeah. They have one of the better midfields in the Premier League. I think the best after cities. Yeah, well, Liverpool fans might disagree, but even even Spurs fans would disagree. Might disagree. Anyways, um, let's talk about Liverpool. Uh, how did they get on? I completely forgot Liverpool. Yeah, so yeah, Brighton, uh, Salah. Again, this guy, like you know, one season wonder. He's already got what three goals in three games. Yeah, he's looking he's good. And and, and uh, if he finishes up with winning the Golden Boot again, yeah. I mean, I'm here for I he might, you know, again if Aguero isn't fit. Throughout the year, I wouldn't be surprised if Salah walks away with another uh, golden boot. I don't think he'll score 32. I think he might. He might. He might score like 25, maybe, maybe 20. But um, and, well, regardless of Salah, I think Liverpool they they look title contenders and they look Man City's best um, challengers, don't they? On theory, they do. On the papers, they do. They have the best squad after City. They probably have the best attack in the league, or even better than City. And judging by the starting weapon, not by the depth. I don't see any weaknesses in that team. I think Lovren is a weak spot, but you know when you have players like Van Dijk and Rob Robertson and you know, Fabinho around you, and uh, Allison is a very good keeper in the back. I think Lovren should be okay. So. Yeah, I would expect them to go for the title this season. I don't expect them to win. I would be very surprised if Man City lose. But I think they'll have to make a good fight for it. Um, Arsenal. P1 over uh, West Ham. Uh, before I get on Arsenal, like, I'm worried for West Ham, by the way. I think um, <laughs> there's also like... A uh, West Ham fan, I think they called into uh, the radio and they were like, how long before we, we start calling uh, Sam Allardyce to come back? <laughs> uh, News a point, Pellegrini, I guess you need to be a bit patient. I guess he's taking his time to sort out the team. It's probably not the team he wanted or they probably can adapt to his situation. They bought a decent amount of players. Yeah, they, I really liked Philip Anderson the other day, by the way. I think that was the first game he's had that showed that, yeah, he's a good player. And was, I'd um, also like to remind you that Arnautovic took his time. He, in his first two matches, it was really bad. But once he started hitting those goals, he was really good. So I think West Ham should be a bit more patient. I know it's really bad right now. And Arsenal, they're really doing really good, aren't they? I thought they were really good against uh, Chelsea. Yeah. They fought back from a 2-2 to... Uh, uh, 2-0 to 2-2, and they eventually lost, but that was a really good comeback. They showed fight, and against West Ham, they won pretty comfortably. Against City, I know most people didn't like that performance, but I felt like it was better than it was under Wenger, so there are positive signs for them. Um, yeah, I think, I think again, I've let my feelings known about Emery. I think he was a good signing. I think uh, Arsenal will turn it around. I think It'll take a lot of time. I don't think they're winning. I think they'll finish outside the top four this year, probably. Maybe even next year. Um, but they will start challenging soon. Um, that's everyone in the top six. Uh, we should talk about Watford. Uh, three games, three wins. Nine of nine above Man City. Um, <laughs> well, well above Man United and Arsenal. So, yeah, this, again, Watford, they always start really well. Like they, every they season, they start so so well, and then they have a really bad middle, and then sort of an okay, and like it's happening again. And this is like they keep changing managers, they keep selling players, they keep buying players, like left, right, and center, and nothing ever happens to them. Like how are they doing it? I have no idea. Same, and you don't expect them to play well given the circumstances, but they always do. Javier Garcia, and. He's not a very high-profile manager, and yet he's getting ourselves. So I don't know how this happens, but they didn't even have a great transfer window. When they, I don't think they bought anyone very famous or anyone expensive for their region. 
yet they're doing so well. Three out of three. And I really didn't expect them to beat Palace. And when you have Saha, you have Benteke, who's pretty good, actually. You have Townsend. You have um, Mayer. Max Mid- so there are a lot of good players in that team and Watford beating them. I'm a bit surprised they're doing this well, actually. Well, they, they, they still have better case, so you know, there's always a chance. But uh, anyways, I, I, I think Watford, like, it's just, it's just amazing. I, I listen, I don't even understand the formation they play. Uh, but I know, I heard of Javi, Javi Garcia before, and you know, he, he's, got, he's got pedigree in football. And he's showing it here. And he might not last too long either. Like, you know, uh, with Watford, you have, if he starts having bad results, like he's going to go like Marco Silva did last year. Uh, but they're doing you know, all the credit to them. And hopefully, I, well, all the, the congratulations to all the Bang, uh, Bangladeshi Watford fans. So there are any. Um, I think that's it for the Premier League. We have a, Oh, do you want to talk about the the pitch? That was a hot topic again in Barcelona's game against uh, Real Valladolid. Do you see the pitch? I do. I think I did because my brother is unfortunately a Barcelona fan. Right. I do watch pretty much every single Barcelona game, and I have a soft spot for Messi. Everyone knows that. By the way, the pitch, man, they were so bad. We've played yeah. in the Carabao Cup and played against some really lower division clubs like football league sides, Division 3, Division 2, Division 4. And even some of those clubs have better field than that. And there were patches, big patches in that field that you could just see visibly. And this is in a top tier league, probably the best league in the world or the second best league in the world. You can have that. You can have a field that bad. I mean, yeah, there's so, this uh, very famous quote from Xavi. I think it was after some Copa del Rey defeat. He blamed the grass for not being able to pass the ball. But the well, Chelsea football said they, they would understand that this has a big impact on your game, especially for a team like Barcelona, who's all about the passing, especially at that point of time. Well, I, I saw that game, and uh, well, I didn't see the whole game, but it, at one point, it wasn't even about the passing. It was like you know. You know, players might die, no, no, they won't die, but they might, they'll get seriously injured. Like, you could they get might. serious injuries playing on a, on a really bad pitch like that. Uh, anyways, like, have you heard the excuses? So, like, it's absolutely crazy. So, the game was on Saturday, was it? Or was it Sunday? It was on Saturday. So, the game was on Saturday. Uh, the, gra- the pitch actually arrived on Thursday. And the re- oh, two days before the game, and the reason it arrived on Thursday was firstly because uh, I, they received some grass, like Real Valladolid, they received some grass like a week before, and they didn't like that grass, so they sent it back. They, send, they said that send us new grass. So they loaded up like more like new grass or turf, whatever you call it, on, um, on a truck in Portugal, right? And it was, that truck was coming from Portugal. And apparently the truck ran late because somebody stole the petrol from the truck. Like, it's like, it's like you know, you go, you go to school and it's like, and your teacher asks, like, why didn't you do your homework? My dog ate the homework. It's like, it's like the stupidest thing you can ever come up with. <laughs> like, uh, it's like, uh, it's hilarious. It's insane. And the only, only defense I would give to Real Valladolid is like, they had the, they have the lowest budget of any team in in La Liga. They're newly promoted. Um, they they should have had the pitch ready, and there's no excuses. I get that. And and also like you know they they laid the training pitch before they laid the 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 pitch at the ground, which was and it was Barcelona as well. Like you know this is a showcase event. They get. They, you know, teams like Real Valladolid, they only get like two big games and it's really big for them. It's big for their fans, like Barcelona coming and Real Madrid coming. Um, and you just ruin one of them. And they actually played well. Like they did okay. They did okay. They only lost one. They had a goal in the very third minute, which, okay, I'll, I, at first I said that it didn't look offside. It should have been called offside, but I think I'm, you know, people, um, 
gave me, gave me like I think people like the Barcelona fans sort of like convinced me, and I think it it was offside. It was correctly ruled offside, and and I was listening to Sid Lowe, and he he sort of agrees with that as well. So yeah, and Viola did well. It's unfortunate that everyone's talking about the pitch, and Teba said there will be disciplinary proceedings and. There's talk of like um, deducting points, which I don't think will happen. But they'll still get a they'll get a big fine, which is sad for them, really. I'm moving on. You really know about all the stories, so yeah, it's a like, no idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and thankfully, nobody got injured. So and also on Denver Sports, which is big for them. Anyway, I'm moving on Real Madrid really quick again. Um, Gareth Bale is looking really good. A six straight La Liga game that he scored in. And you know, I, we never doubted his talent. Like I never doubted this guy's talent. This guy is really good, and he is Ronaldo's replacement. Like he could be, and he's proving it. Yeah, but the thing is, is he going to be fit? When he is fit, he's fantastic. We know that. And but also, like Lopetegui has, has changed Real Madrid as well. Like they, they have more. I think they're more of a passing team. Like they're almost like Barcelona from um, like three years ago. Uh, where they're passing teams off the park. Yeah, money. The thing with Bale, let's end Bale first. Um, whenever I've seen him play, he usually comes up with this moment of brilliance where you feel like, yeah, this is the guy who can succeed Ronaldo. Then two games later, you see him getting injured, or he's and have been protected in the training for uh, not not being in the best physical shape. That's the thing about Bale. He's so almost 29 or 28. I'm not sure, but even at this point, he doesn't have the fitness to continue 56 things, 56 games a season, which Ronaldo did at, up until the age of, I guess, 32, 33. He was there all the time. He was saving their asses. Can Bale do that? That's the question. Imagine missing Bale on a final or a semi-final or a quarter-final against a big team or a El Clasico. That can very well happen. I'm, I'm guessing that has happened before. Ronaldo. That never happened before. That's the difference between Ronaldo and Bale. Bale has the talent, Bale has the skills, Bale has the uh, capacity to be that guy, but he doesn't have the fitness. So Real Madrid, they'll basically win pretty much every single game, and except for, I guess, El Clasico, which will be a contest, and against um, Atletico Madrid. It's her, there's not really much, not really much competition in that league for Madrid. Um, any view? Any word on the playing style? Uh, it's not the same as before. I think it's, I mean, it, it's not defensive or bad. First of all, it's just different. I think they are focusing more on keeping the ball between themselves and less on the crossing that Zidane used to focus on the crossing and the counter attacks. And uh, you know, this is more typical Spanish football from a typical Spanish coach. And I really like this going in Asensio. Them linking up, and yep, yeah, that's about it. it there's no money. It's too early to say anything. I think. Yep. Um, uh, all right. Um, oh, um, Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Two games for Juventus. Yet to score. Uh, is this the end? Is it all over for him? <laughs> <laughs> like, you listen to a lot of fans. Like it is. It is the end of Ronaldo. But. Uh, no, he's, uh, Richard Keys, he was a uh, yeah, he was the show host for some famous British football show. I don't remember. I couldn't be in sport as it. And he was like Ronaldo was so good at uh, Madrid, but he's gotten two go games without scoring a goal at Juventus. What does it tell about La Liga? And this other guy replied, "Say Ronaldo didn't have really much goals in the La Liga for the first few months. There was a time when Paulinho had outscored him, and I think by January he only had five goals to show for. So it really doesn't say much except for the fact that a player who's aging might be inconsistent at times. That's." pretty understandable. And Ronaldo wasn't bad in the last game. Yes, he could have scored that goal and goal, Mane, after he missed and Manzugic scored, Ronaldo was like, Mane, yeah, it was it really form, though, like the, the goalkeeper got a touch, right? So that's why he's like, um, like he sort but of his missed. Reaction to that, yeah. His reaction to Manzugic scoring, that was really funny. But yeah, that's not a big deal. People will make a lot of it. Uh, um, people will make a lot out of it, but that's not a big deal for me. He played a very good match. So, yeah, goals will come. It's Cristiano Ronaldo, I mean. Yeah, you know, he's, he's... 
uh, you just know he's gonna he's gonna come good. And if, when once he starts scoring, he's not gonna stop. Like we all know who, what Ronaldo's capable of. By the way, our producer before he just came on, he's just reminding me that uh, uh, he was man of the match in the last match. He was, yeah. And we, I was being sarcastic, but yeah, Ronaldo's gonna be a like. He's gonna be. He's gonna do really well. I, I can just see it happening. And yeah, he's Juventus smart. is gonna do really well in the league. And this is the fir- actually this is the first time in a few seasons where they have started well. Like Juventus usually, um, they they start the league season pretty bad, and then they sort of come back around uh, December. But this time they've started well, and this doesn't look good for for many other teams. I quickly I'll mention. Uh, Napoli came back from 2-0 down against AC Milan to beat them 3-2, which, which gave me a chuckle because I'm not AC Milan's biggest fan. Um, and yeah, Milan also bottled a 2-0 lead. Uh, who else bottled a 2-0 lead? Inter Milan. Oh, right. Um, Roma, was, uh, Inter- uh, Roma also made a very good comeback, Shagan. Roma I did. What think, was the score? I, I, I didn't follow. I Roma. think at halftime it was um, three one, I guess, and then it ended three three. Oh yeah. Um, Premier three one, nothing. At some point it was three three one, and then it ended. Atlanta. Three, it was against Atlanta. And Atlanta. It was against Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, and it's, Atlanta is a side that I really like because of their um, because of their manager. Um, Gasparini and I think he if if Benitez ever goes, he'll be my first pick. Gasparini. Um uh, anyways the orbit isn't here, but um I watched a little bit of the Bayern game. I didn't watch the whole game again. Uh <laughs> and uh, they weren't they weren't very convincing, but they still won. Which is again typical um Bayern Munich. And I don't expect them to do really well. Um uh, first game of the season, but it was against uh, Nagelsmann's Hoffenheim. Were you able to catch the game? I saw the game, man. They were really average, especially in the midfield. Yeah. I mean, it felt like watching a Man United game. It was really slow as well. Like, they, like, slow, it was boring, it was sloppy. It was basically a Man United game. They just scored more goals than we did. We it was should. almost like a preseason That's, game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and I think there were some VR moments. moments as well, which was pretty funny. I think Thiago Chilo, like Thiago uh, Goretzka, he scored this really good goal from a long distance. It was a deflected shot, went in, and then VR shows it was a handball. So they gave it a penalty and not the goal. So that was pretty funny. See, I, again, VR, I'm against it. I, uh, I'm against it as well. I mean, we'll it's okay more. if you're using it in the World Cup, but in the league, I, I'm more of a traditionalist, you know. So I'm more yeah. Bhalagan. It kills the flow of the game. Yeah, uh, when Orvid gets back, we'll talk more about. It. Um, we'll, we'll we'll do the questions really fast. I think which is taken way too long. Uh, I won't do all of them because a lot of the a lot of them are about Man United. I sort of covered everything. Um, let me just pick. Oh, we didn't. If we'll just, I'll just do this really quick. If Moyne is sacked, who should he be replaced with? Um, and is there any chance of Zidane? This is from Imran Fahad, who's a Man City fan, by the way. I know him. Uh, my personal choice would be Pochettino because, again, I want someone who will be okay with working with average players. I don't know if Zidane will be. Even if Woodward promises Zidane that he will get him Varane or this guy or that guy, chances are it won't happen. Players won't always want to come, and even if they want to do, you have to play over the top. There will be a lot of issues, like there's, where, there is with uh, Mourinho. So you have to be also someone who's okay with working with younger or lesser talented players. I don't want to say it that way, but that it is. That's how it is. So it's not. I want someone who's okay with working with these uh, players around these ballparks who are not really up to the mark, but he's. Want to up for the task to improve them and take them to the place where they use, they would belong to, and after that, once we're there at the summit, maybe you can get Zidane in or Pep Guardiola or whoever is at the top of their game at that point and go for the Champions League, which I don't see Pochettino win really, but he's someone who can improve the team. 
Taku is another one who could do who could have done that, but he's not available anymore. Um, but you know, I guess I'll be okay with Zidane. I just don't know if you know he'll be okay with working with Smalling and Jones after you've worked with Ramos and Varane. It's it's gonna be tough. I think it's a different proposition as well. I think Real Madrid had a good had a good squad there. Like a lot of the players were there. I think whereas Man United, you have to almost build. Uh, again, which is, um, I know many fans won't be happy with hearing rebuilding. Uh, you, I think you guys have been hearing that for five years. I think but there's more coming, especially if uh, Mourinho goes. And I don't think Mourinho should go before the end of the season either. I think that's my personal. It's not because I don't like Ben United. I'm just saying, uh, I don't oh. think that replacing him in the middle of the season is a good solution. But that depends on money, how bad the result is. Say if you're 15th, like yeah, you're Chelsea, really would you second? It's not matter, really. It's not like... Right well, now yeah, we're 13th. Let's see if we, we lose forward. to Burnley. And there's a good chance we can lose to Burnley. We have, I think, Burnley and Watford next. Watford's in really good form. Burnley have a good defense. Well, there's an international so, break as well. So, um, so which we If all. we don't money, if we lose either of those games, that puts a lot of pressure on us. Uh, next question, the Himal moderator. What does club do differently that appeals to players despite not delivering profit? I think we discussed this. I, I'll, it's that thing about you know times changing, 2018, social media, uh, you know, psychology has changed younger players. They're more, uh, I wouldn't say, I hate the word, but I'll just say that we, the thing younger players or younger people are more tender Nowadays, it's, it sounds bad, but it is. Um, but I think that's just it. It's just the times of like, throwing the, the hair dry treatment of Ferguson. And here's the thing, what people don't remember, like people will bring up Ferguson's SRLX's like, hair dry treatment again. But for, the, the reason Ferguson is the greatest manager ever is because he adapted. Like towards the end, he changed. It wasn't. He didn't do that. In his entire philosophy. Yeah, yeah. He changed. He adapted from the 1980s to the 1990s. He adapted from the 90s to the 2000s. And he adapted from the 2000s to the 2010s. He, he changed. Like, to remember Rooney? Rooney was almost about to go. He, like, he sort of, like, he came and he did that press conference or the interview, I can't remember, where he was, like, a broken man. And, and I'm, I strongly believe he actually went to Rooney and requested, like, hey, stay. And that made Wayne Rooney stay, and then Man United won more trophies. So Ferguson changed. He didn't have that hair dry treatment in 2011 or 2013. That's not how he won those Premier Leagues. He, he adapted with the times, and that's why he is who he is. And Mourinho needs to do the same. Um, I'll leave that at that. Uh, I, I'll, I, I'll have you answer this. Do you know the situation with PSG and FFP? Uh, how are these guys not in trouble? Like, uh, I'm Bujina. Like, it's almost they spend what, 400 million last summer? They, sp- uh, uh, they, they barely sold it. And, uh, Mbappe's fees will be counting as this season's expenditure, not last season. So, basically, last season they only sold, uh, they only bought Neymar and sold a lot of players. I, uh, I don't quite remember. Even so, they should be in trouble, but but. they should be in trouble, typically. But then at the same time, you see Barcelona buying Coutinho, 150 million, more or less. And in January, they bought Dembele, so that's 300 million there. Barca sold Neymar, because they still uh, spend a lot of money. Uh, So, I don't know how it works, but from what I've read so far in the articles, the worst that can happen to PSG is... Uh, fine, not a ban from Europe or anything like that. They w- they would get a fine at best. So I, my yeah, question is, like, what is the point of that? Like, like, then like, AC Milan didn't they get like a two year ban for something? And yeah, then, and then it was revoked. They so. appealed and then it was overturned. Like, what is the point of this? Like, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't it? Doesn't at all. FFP is just a formality to show the yeah you are aware of the fact that fans aren't happy about other clubs spending. But they won't really do anything about this. And basically, it's like Donald Trump's trying to show that he's doing a lot of work when he's actually doing nothing. 
anyway, I'll move on. Next question. Uh, oh, are we at? We we spoke so much about Una Emery. I'm not gonna. Um, Shohan asks, is uh, Benzema become deadly again on Lopetegui? Uh, under under Lopetegui, Madrid adapting to a new style which you talked about. But yeah, what about Benzema? Two two games, two goals. Uh, he scored what four last season, I think. Um. He's a good player, and but yeah, he's almost halfway there. I mean, there was a time when we had Rooney and he wasn't performing. Sometimes he would score in two or three games, and fans would be like, "Though Rooney's back," but he never really. Maybe, maybe Ronaldo was holding Benzema back. We never know. Uh, though he was holding him back in the sense that Ronaldo was used to be the focus of the attack. He's not, yeah. and now anymore. So Benzema would get a lot more opportunities. But Benzema missed a lot of easy chances, so there's really no excuse for that. He's a decent player. I don't think his money, the player Real Madrid should have. That's about it. I don't think he's coming back to his old form. I don't think that's ever possible. He's like 30 right now. And after that scandal, I think money it had a mental toll on him that he just could never relieve himself of. So I don't see Benzema going back to being that 2010 version of him. Yeah, I don't think, and he also, he's what, 30, I guess? I don't, I don't know. He's pretty old. Right, he's uh, around that getting the region. Um, the new playing style of Madrid, I, actually, I, I saw a stat like a few minutes ago. They have actually more passes than Barcelona, which I don't think has happened in the last 10 years. Uh, I'm guessing, by the way, but... I, I'm pretty sure I'm correct. But uh, what will be the effect of that playing style for Madrid in the short and long run? In the short run, we don't know. Long run, I, I can only see it helping them. But it might also pave the way for the type of players they buy. Like, whereas, if you're going to play a passing game, you're going to need to buy players who can pass the ball, especially defenders who can pass the ball and uh, fullbacks who can pass the ball and, well, obviously, midfielders. I think they already have midfielders who can pass the ball anyway. Um, and I think they're going to go for money, promoting Asensio to the next level this season. And this type of football really helps him. Yeah. He's I, I so done well in Spain. And so has Isco, by the way. I think Isco was Spain's best player in the qualifiers. Or the friendlies leading up to the World Cup. He was really good against Argentina. He was fantastic. He was really bad against so, Russia, by the way. Uh, Russia, Russia can't do I don't think so. I think it was under... And it was after the Yeah, yeah it was zero, but I'm just saying, yeah. Man, what I'm saying is a short passing game really benefits players like Isco or Asensio. So I guess it's good for them. Well, I'll just look at this. Uh, right. So, uh, well, Modric was on the bench again, but um, any chance of leaving for Inter Milan before the window ends because the window is still open? And no, he wait. already said... The window is closed. He in said, it, he's come right? out and said he won't leave. On Instagram, I think. He's staying. Well, because the window slows in Italy, I forgot. And there's no. absolutely no way you sell Ronaldo and Modric in the same uh, same yeah, I window. Think and I think the Serie A window is closed already. I'm not sure. No, no but I think uh, I think he, uh, he, he uh, is going to go because uh, there's a deal on the table for Modric, not just for Inter Milan. It, I think it's something like two years at Milan, in, two years at Inter, and then three years in China. Because the owners have a team in China, and they, they told him, like, we'll pay you millions to play for two or three years whenever in China. So, and also just, he can just go there, play for five years, and make, like, millions, which I wouldn't begrudge him. Like, you know, he's one of the best midfielders I've ever seen play. So, he can, but if you're Perez, do you sell Ronaldo and Modric? I think in the that's same the only season? reason he's not. Perez didn't let him go. I think. It might be that Modric wanted to go. If Ronaldo were there, or if he had been replaced by, say, exactly. Neymar or Hazard, I could see him leaving Modric. But because yeah, yeah, he yeah, wasn't, and that's the only reason Paris didn't let him go. It's happening, yeah. Anyways, uh, somebody asked us to discuss uh, Muhammad Nafi's Mahi to discuss Burnley and Everton. I would just I'll say about Burnley. So that, they're playing the Europa League, so they're playing four competitions. I think it, it, this is going to affect them. I remember when we were in the Europa League, it affected us. When Southampton was it? When Southampton went the Europa League, that affected them. 
every single team that goes to play first season for Tottenham when they were in the Champions League, it affected them slightly, whatever. But then they came back. But you know, it, 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 it has an effect on me. It, it doesn't, the players are not used to playing um, Thursday, Sunday. Um, Monday. Advice is, Monday. Burnley does not have the squad to compete in the Europe right now. So play younger players, get knocked out, don't and don't give a crap about it because sorry for that word, but you don't really you can't really do that. You can't balance Premier League and um Europa League at the same time and you don't have the team to win the Europa League. No way, not even close. No, they don't, there, but there's a good chance just, Monday. Champions League. I, I just look at it. You look at the, the winners. Yeah. Well, <laughs> It's not that. It's just I'm just thinking in terms of the fans. So for the fans, like this is the only chance a lot of these fans will ever get to visit, like I don't know Greece or like Slovakia or something, and uh, and it's a, it's a big deal for them. I remember when like I'll just give you an example when uh, Newcastle played uh, Club Brugge in Belgium, and. There was a joke like on the Newcastle groups on Facebook that if you ever wanted to pick up a girl uh, like in Newcastle, like that was it. Like when Newcastle were playing Club Brugge in Brugge, like you, you could have just gone to Newcastle and then there was no men there. It was just all women. Like because something like 25,000 fans traveled for that game. I think they had like only 6,000 had tickets and then the other 20,000 were in the city center have, drinking and having fun. So it's a big deal for um, for fans, these European games. So, and the same would go for Burnley because they qualified this year. I don't think they'll qualify next year. And you never know if you're ever going to play in Europe ever again. And so this, that's why they should go for it. I don't think they'll get relegated. They're too good. And their manager is really good. So why not? Like, maybe even a group stage run is a big deal for them. This is Burnley. Like, they were nobodies, like, you know, a few years ago. Uh, they were always under the shadow of their, like, cross-town rivals, which is uh, Blackburn Rovers. And nobody gave a damn about Burnley, and now they're playing in Europe. When, whereas Blackburn, um, you know, they just got, they just got back. And then, you know, they're, they're in the lower divisions, which is crazy, right? You know, they're the former Premier League champions and, you know, Burnley is there in Europe. Which is, for them, for the fans, it's a big deal. So that's I'll just give it to them. Um, I think that's it. That was the last. Oh, Everton, again, I think we discussed last week, Marcus Silva, I think um, he's going he's gonna to do good. Um, they, they, uh, they have a decent squad. They have a lot of number 10s which uh, if they can make use of, they'll do well. And uh, they, need, they just need a, a good goal scorer uh, up front, which I think they can get in January if they, because the owner has a lot of money. Yeah, depending on money, if the current manager gets to stay, because Everton has a good reputation for sacking their managers. I think with Silva, they, they, they'll give him time. Probably and, and more stable. Yeah. Well as well. So. But then again, he started well with... Um, Watford last year, and that didn't go too well. What so, happened with Watford is after Everton intervened, I think there was this distance that was created between Silva and the players and the Watford staff because he clearly wanted to leave, and Watford did not want him to leave. They want Everton to pay that, I think, 25 million costs, and obviously, Everton yeah. wasn't going to do that for a manager. Like, Everton, like. But the players knew the manager wants to leave, and the manager himself wanted to leave. And he knew that if he plays bad, man, he performs bad, he gets sacked, and Everton hires him next season. Because Allardyce, uh, sorry, Allardyce, Allardyce wasn't going to stay there for long. So, hey, anyway, just he knew uh, that this was coming to an end, and that's what caused Watford's decline in performance. Anyways, um. Like, ever like people like uh, somebody will put this up, but yeah, Bournemouth Everton game. I'll just really quickly if, if you haven't seen. So, um, 
Richardson obviously he ruined a lot of people's fantasy um well, the red card this week uh, thankfully i didn't have him on my team so i i survived and uh, so it was then well what sorry wait everton went up 2-0 while they were playing with 10 men then well it was 1-0 and then bournemouth had a player sent off everton went up 2-0 both teams playing with 10 men, Bournemouth came back for twice in two, in like three minutes or something. Uh, it came to 2-2 two, two, and then we had like 12, 13 minutes of stoppage time which were like well forever. Uh, and, and then the game ended 2-2. Uh, it was like a crazy wild game. Like, um, it's a good result for Everton away at Bournemouth and it's a decent result for Against a decent, it's a fair result for both sides, I guess. Yep. I want to say something. Uh, Sigurdsson, last season, the uh, Everton spent, I think, forty-five million yeah. for him. Yep. And he was absolutely horrible. But this season, he looks much, much better. I think. He well, he was playing in the same last season. What do you expect? So even so, man, I, you expect a certain level of performance, and he surely wasn't putting that on. But a season, he looks much better. I think he was pretty good against uh, Southampton. Really good against Southampton. Uh, last match, he got an assist. So, yeah, he's, man, he's finally showing why Everton paid so much money for him. Uh, let's just call it quits. We've been doing this for, what, one hour, 40 Most hours? hours. Like, hopefully, hopefully, uh, Rifat can, you know, get, get the silences away and... Uh, make our voices go faster and make it shorter for other people listening. Thank you for everyone who was listening. Take care, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you, man. And morning out. Oh, yeah. Morning out. Marcellian. Goodbye. I had to say that. <laughs> yeah, because somebody joined. We all saw. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.